Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Mauro Ricotta. I'm from University of Padova. And the, the paper that I will present to you is titled Felix Trends Evaluation of Notch Tied Steel Specimens Using Critical Distances. Design against fatigue is a key aspect for structural designers, in particular when notch effects are present. Usually, the fatigue strength of notch components is evaluated starting from the fatigue strength of plane spacement, which is expressed by means of equation relating a damage variable with the number of cycle to failure. In the literature, stress, strain, and energy based approaches are available to correlate the fatigue strength of notch and plane specimen. In the last year, we have carried out several free tests of AI ASI 304 low carbon stainless steels um, by imposing axial zero mean stress free tests on plane and bluntly notched specimen, having the geometry uh, show below. You, where you can see here a uh, specimen having a central hole uh, with 8 mm radius. And then uh, U notch having notch radius equal to 5 mm and 90 degree V notch with a notch radius equal to 3 mm. Uh, we have found that neither net section nor linear elastic peak stresses are able to rationalize in single scatter cure the free life of plain and bluntly notch specimen. On the contrary, it, uh, we have seen that the fatigue data can be rationali rationalized in a single scatter band in terms of heat energy density per cycle um, as fatigue damage indicator. Therefore, in view, uh, we have in this paper we have assumed the elastic plastic strain energy density has fatigue damage variable, and therefore we can see that. Uh, two components have the same free life when they have the same level of elastic plastic strain energy density, here named as WCC. Uh, usually, at the free knee, the plane material behavior is supposed to be fully elastic, and therefore, the, at the free limit, the elastic plastic strain energy density is equal to the linear elastic strain energy density. But when at the FDIC knee, the plane material behavior is elastic plastic, the elastic plastic strain energy density can be analytically evaluated simply by adding the elastic component and the plastic component of the strain energy density and therefore if we assume the rambler Rosewood law the plastic component can be easily evaluated by using these equations uh, in the case of notch components the evaluation of the elastic plastic string energy density requires no linear final element analysis Moreover, often engineers are more familiar with stress-based than energy-based approaches. Therefore, the aim of this work is to revise the classical stress-based approach in terms of energy-based concept. In view of this, an equivalent fully elastic material was defined, which assures that the elastic plastic strain energy density evaluated at the Fadigny is maintained. Then, a coefficient of plasticity Kp was defined as the ratio between the equivalent fully elastic fatigue limit and the actual fatigue limit. It can be seen that the Kp coefficient depends on the ratio between the plastic strain and the elastic strain evaluated at the fatigue limit and on the strain hardening coefficient n. A first experimental campaign was carried out on 6 mm thick high SI 304 low carbon specimens. Strain and stress control fatigue tests were carried out and a star case procedure at 10 million cycles was conducted to evaluate the material fatigue limit that was found equal to 225 MPa. 
stress controlled fatigue tests were carried out on the blunt notch geometries that I show you before and that are shown in this slide. In this slide, the stress life and the cyclic stre strain curves are plotted, and we can see that uh, the, fatigue, the fatigue knee is located at 160,000 cycles, and you can see that at the fatigue limit, the material behavior is elastic plastic. Then the coefficient of plasticity Kp was calculated equal to 1.58. When we use the point stress approach, the hypothesis is that at the, at the fatigue limit, the plastic strains are negligible and then the critical distance can be evaluated as follows. For this material, the range of the mode 1 cracker propagation threshold was experimentally measured equal to 8.7 MPa square root of meter, and X0 was found equal to 0 0.059 mm. Under the hypothesis of linear elastic material behavior, a theoretical stress concentration factor referred to the net section and depending on the critical distance can be defined as follows. Therefore, the stress life curve on bluntly notched specimens can be estimated by starting from that of play material as follows. At the fatigue limit, multiply by multiply the fatigue limit by the coefficient of plasticity Kp, while in the low cycle fatigue regime, it was assumed that plasticity of the entire net section controls the fatigue strength of notch geometries, and then it was supposed that at 1000 cycles, the point stress is equal to Kt multiplied by the fatigue strength of play material evaluated at 1000 cycles. Recently, we have carried out a second experimental campaign by carrying out fully reversed stress control fatigue tests on a second batch of specimens having notch radius equal to 3, 1 and 0.5 mm and notch opening angle equal to 45 and 135 degrees. For this batch of material, a fatigue limit, limit equal to 202 MPa was measured, and also in this case the knee of the fatigue curve was found at 160,000 cycles. In the past, it was shown that for notch opening angle equal to zero, the stress field at distance equal to 20% of the notch radius R is equal to that of a crack having the length equal to the notch depth. Therefore, the notch can be considered as a crack and the fatigue strength of the notch component can be verified by checking that the intensity of the stress field of notch component is lower than the mode 1 crack propagation threshold of cracked material. Since Kt is evaluated under the hypothesis of linear elastic material behavior, plasticity is taken into account in an implicit way. In this slide, it can be seen the comparison between the fatigue curves of plain and cracked material. We can see that the number of cycles threshold is completely different from the knee of the fatigue curve obtained in the case of plain material. In this work, the critical distance was defined for a given number of cycles, according to the equation shown in this slide. In this slide, you can see the fatigue curve of plain material with the knee at n0 number of cycles to failure. The, this curve is the fatigue curve of cracked material realized in terms of net stress with the knee at the number of cycles to threshold. The red curve represents the reference curve for cracked materials realized in terms of single point evaluated for a critical distance calculated at N0 
and the blue one is the reference curve evaluated for corrected materials in terms of sigma point calculated for the critical distance corresponding to a uh, number of cycles for threshold. In this slide, the KTN point versus distance from the notch tip trends, evaluated by means of linear elastic finite element analysis, are plotted. The gray line represents the stress field of a crack having a length equal to 8 mm, normalized with respect to the applied stress. We can see that the normalized stress, stress fields of notch geometries are comparable to that of the crack, while close to the notch tip, the stress field is controlled by the notch radius. And then, if we adopted the critical distance evaluated by considering N0, we can see that we are working in a zone where the stress fields of notch cone geometries are comparable to that of a crack. And then, we can calculate the fatigue strengths of notch geometries in terms of net stress range, simply dividing the fatigue strengths of flame material by the relevant KTN point of the notch geometries. On the contrary, if we adopt the critical distance evaluated by starting from the number of cycle to threshold, we are working in the zone controlled by the notch tip radius, and then we have to take into account the plasticity by means of the KP coefficient as we have done for blunt notches. Since at the moment we have carried out fatigue tests having a number of cycles to fail or lower than 2 millions, we have evaluated the fatigue strengths of notch specimen in terms of net trace range, considering only the critical distance relevant to N0. The experimental data are reporting the blue box, while the calculated fatigue strengths are reporting the green box. We can see that there is a satisfactory agreement between experimental and calculated results. In this work, the elastic plastic strain energy density was adopted as fatigue damage index to correlate fatigue data relevant to notch specimens and play material made from the tie steels characterized by the presence of plasticity at the fatigue knee. In the case of notch geometries, the elastic plastic strain energy density evaluation requires no linear fine element analysis. On the contrary, the elastic plastic strain energy density evaluation of plain material can be easily done analytically. A KP parameter was defined to account for plasticity at the fatigue knee of play material on the basis of an equivalent fatigue limit, which assures that the elastic plastic strain energy density evaluated at the fatigue knee is maintained. And then the point stress approach was revisited and applied to evaluate the fatigue curves of AISI 304 low carbon style steel specimens wakened by blunt and severe notches, starting from the fatigue curve of plain material.